Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the massive open online course on sociological perspectives on modernity. My name is Sambit Malik. I teach sociology at the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. The purpose of this course is to unfurl the debates on modernity from a wide range of perspectives. Okay. Uh, what I what we are going to discuss in this course over a period of 30 lectures, I mean 30 hours, that we are going to discuss about why the stuff we are uh, discussing. Okay. We are doing on okay, uh, uh, the course is relevant, whether it is uh, how it is relevant to the contemporary debates on modernity. Okay. One may, one may, oh, uh, it, it is uh, though, though the nomenclature of this course is uh, sociological perspectives on modernity. Okay, the 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 way we try to engage with modernity, okay, we also try to interrogate modernity, because there is no one way of viewing modernity, there is no linear way of viewing modernity, there is no single way of looking at modernity. If there is European modernity, there is American modernity, there is North American modernity, there is Latin American modernity, there is African modernity. There is Asian modernity. Again, again, there is within Asia. You, you can say there is Chinese modernity. There is Japanese modernity. There is uh, Indian modernity. Even within India, you will you will find different uh, uh, forms of modernity, different sorts of modernity. Okay. We do not live in a world of single singular modernity. We we live in a world of pluralistic modernity, multiple modernity. Okay. Perhaps the purpose of this course now is the following that, that we want to interrogate the hitherto existing view about modernity, which has been very much hierarchical in nature, which is not uh, perhaps interactionist. Okay. We want to embed different cultures to look at modernity. That is why the, the nomenclature of this course stands uh, as uh, sociological perspectives on modernity. Okay. The broad outline that we are going to cover, we will, we will start with thematic preliminaries. I mean within th thematic preliminaries, we will we'll discuss uh, what are the problems that we are going to discuss, uh, how we are going to approach a specific problem, how we are going to approach a specific perspective, what may be the possible methods to approach uh, 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 to, to examine a specific perspective, what are the tools and techniques, what, are, what may be the possible methodological warnings to study a particular perspective. This is very important. Okay. Then we will move on to classic statements about sociological modernity in the works of Karl Marx and Max Weber. In 
then we will discuss the structuralist interpretation of modernity that is called ultra modernist world view, ultra modernist perspective. Then we will discuss western Marxist perspectives on modernity, then we will discuss synthesizing modernity and social theory, then we will discuss deconstructing modernity, then we will discuss uh, uh, a new totality, uh, then references okay, obviously. I mean what we are going to do here that when we discuss sociological modernism, we will discuss the works of Marx and Weber while discussing ultra modernist perspective I mean the structuralist interpretation of modernity. We are going to discuss the works of Georg Lukacs, uh, Antonio Gramsci and Alan Turin when, when we uh, uh, sorry sorry I I, 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 I I committed a mistake here. Uh, I mean when we discuss ultra modernism I mean the structuralist interpretation of uh, modernity we are going to discuss the works of Levi Strauss and Louis Althusser. And then when we discuss western Marxism I mean society as a human creation we are going to discuss the works of Georg Lukacs, Antonio Gramsci and uh, Louis Althusser. Then we will discuss uh, in, in the section on synthesizing modernity and social theory, uh, we are going to discuss the works of uh, Immanuel Wallerstein, Anthony Giddens and Eugen Habermas. And then we'll, we'll, we will uh, discuss uh, at least at least three perspectives while discussing uh, uh, deconstruction of modernity. I mean those three perspectives will be will be post colonial perspectives, uh, post modernist perspectives and feminist perspectives. Okay. Then we will also discuss what is what is that a new totality. I mean a new totality may be represented in the form of uh, modernity in non modern contexts. I mean European modernity or Americanized hegemonic modernity in, in Indian context, in Asian context, in African context, in Latin American context. Okay. Uh, I mean when we interrogate the, the, the hegemonic European American modernity, then we must discuss the, the uh, the idea of alternative or multiple modernities. That then then we'll discuss the paradigm of revisionism in the discourse on modernity. Then reflexivity in modernity. Uh, I mean, when I say reflexivity, I mean uh, post-industrial society, uh, um, autonomy, social movements, and alternative paradigms in science and development. Okay, these these are the core. I mean, I mean, this is the this is the broad outline that we want to sketch to discuss uh, uh, sociological perspectives and modernity. It doesn't uh, to, uh, as, a, as a as a prefatory remark. Let me tell you that it doesn't imply that it covers all aspects of sociological perspectives and modernity. But at least it this course provides us with a framework of how to deal with modernity, how to question modernity, how to bring about a dialectic of engaging with and interrogating modernity. Because if I cannot engage myself with modernity, I cannot question modernity, I cannot interrogate modernity. I must be able to engage with modernity that would enable me to interrogate modernity. Then what is this, this term interrogation? Now we are coming to thematic preliminary. You see the term interrogation or interrogating modernity does not mean merely destruction of hitherto existing ideas. Whatever ideas till now we have, 
does not imply that we are going to reject all or destroy all those ideas. Interrogation or interrogating modernity also refers to the dialectic of engaging with and interrogating hitherto existing ideas. Let me give you an example. If I say capitalism, if I do not engage myself with capitalism, I cannot interrogate capitalism. I must be able to critically engage with capitalism. Okay. Then, as a, as, a, as a corollary, the ethos of interrogation or interrogating modernity loses its significance in the absence of a critical engagement with hitherto existing ideas. Then, if I cannot engage myself with, we, if we cannot engage ourselves with, uh, uh, with uh, capitalism, uh, okay, then we cannot interrogate capitalism or modernity or class consciousness or caste uh, discrimination or racial discrimination or gender disparity and so on. We must be able to critically engage ourselves with that particular phenomenon. Okay? And therein lies the spirit of dialectic, a sense of dialectic, the dialectic of engaging with and questioning modernity or interrogating modernity. Okay? And what is that engagement, critical engagement? Okay? Engagement assumes greater significance in the context of not just interrogation, but also interrogating the interrogator. We will come to this point a little while later. Okay. Suppose, let me give you an example. Suppose, in, in the 19th century, many philosophers, sociologists, historians, even scientists, particularly Marx, okay. they brought about a critique to capitalism. Now, they, 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 try, they tried to interrogate the claims that capitalism makes. Now, we also try to interrogate Marx. I mean, we are also trying to interrogate the interrogator. Okay. That is why that, that this critical engagement is very important. I can give you numerous examples. I mean, I mean, in the context of uh, the controversies uh, uh, surrounding and the debate on uh, environment versus development, we not only uh, interrogate uh, the hitherto existing ideas, but also we uh, interrogate uh, the the interrogator. Okay, and and that's why. This is not, uh, that is why only by interrogating the hitherto existing ideas or by, uh, or by interrogating the interrogator, the process does not end. That is why the process is dialectical in nature. That is why engagement assumes greater significance in the context of not just interrogation, but also interrogating the interrogator. As a consequence of which, I mean, why, why, why we say that no engagement assumes greater significance in the context of not just interrogation, but also interrogating the interrogator, precisely because both engaging with hitherto existing ideas as well as interrogating hitherto existing ideas are context specific. What we saw what the world witnessed in the 18th century, 19th century, 20th century. Now, things change very fast. That is why, I mean, the, the, our, if our context changes, okay, then, then our discussion on uh, engaging with and interrogating a particular phenomenon also change. That is important. Okay. If our circumstances change, okay, then our uh, uh, attitude, our debate, our culture, I, I mean our, our um, preferences, they also change. Okay? 
this is this is the uh, this is the perspective that we have been deploying to understand mediunity examine mediunity as well as interrogate mediunity okay this is very important okay this is a perspective what is a perspective a perspective refers to a set of symbols which human beings used to select from all potentially observable aspects of nature when i say nature it includes both natural and social phenomena a perspective is above all a viewpoint a perspective is that kind of a viewpoint which helps us in selecting organizing our perceptions and guiding our actions okay in this sense we are using the term perspective okay i mean i mean very 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 briefly this this course uh, uh, on sociological perspectives on modernity okay is a journey it's a it's a journey through social theory of the past 100 years or 200 years or so and and uh, in in the lectures to follow okay uh, we will start with uh, marx and weber and perhaps wind up with giddens and habermas in between the two in between marx and weber on the one hand and giddens and habermas habermas on the other in between the two we travel uh, around the theoretical worlds okay i mean we get to visit structuralists and post structuralists western marxism uh, and cultural studies feminism and post modernism and other interesting places we must be able to travel many places to have different differing perspectives okay uh, in in the, in due course of time okay as you might guess uh, that we don't spend much time in any one of these and this is uh, mainly because we are more interested in the ideas than in the names okay this is not an exercise in learning of information about great theorists suppose what are the contributions of marx what are the contributions of habermas what are the contributions of wallerstein what are the contributions of michel foucault this, this course is not about that for that perhaps a course on sociological theory would help maybe in in the coming semester or so we'll we'll try to provide a course on sociological theory okay but 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 for the time being please remember one thing that we are not at all interested in we are not much interested in names but we are we are interested in ideas we are interested in theories this is not an exercise in learning of information about great theorists it is an exercise in thinking sociologically philosophically okay this this is, i mean for 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 the sake of simplicity okay uh, uh, let me let me repeat that this course is about about the critical modernist paradigm in sociology okay uh i mean in other words sociological thinking about modernity and sociology as a modern activity and critics of this approach i mean one must understand this this particular thing that when we say that critical modernist paradigm in sociology i mean sociological thinking about modernity and sociology as a modern activity because sociology emerged also in in a, in a historical context sociology as a discipline sociology as a theoretical construct sociology as a methodological device okay it emerged in in a specific historical context that's why sociology is a modern activity in that sense in what kind of historical context if somebody asks me then that historical context 
I mean lies in, in the context of enlightenment, industrial revolution, okay? French revolution, sociology as a discipline okay? gained moment. Okay? Earlier its name was social physics. Okay? Uh, in fact, August Comte uh, he coined the term sociology okay? from social physics. Uh, if you if you look at this, that when we say sociology is a modern activity, because sociology uh, the, the the emergence of sociology as a discipline must be traced to the transition from pre-capitalist social formations to capitalist social formations. That in this sense sociology is a modern activity. Sociology is, is, a, is a modern activity precisely because it emerged in the context of the rise of positivism. When I say positivism, I mean it is the supremacy of sciences over non-sciences. I mean all theological stages, metaphysical stages uh, were questioned by positivists. I do not uh, mean that positivism cannot be countered, positivism can also should be countered in fact, okay? but in different context. But, but sociology as a theoretical construct, sociology as a methodological device, sociology as a disciplinary formation, okay? I mean it emerged in a certain historical context, in a certain political context. Okay? His, a sense of history a sense of politics is very much embedded in the emergence of sociology as a discipline. It is very important to understand. For that is why I just said that, that but for the sake of simplicity, okay, this course is all about the critical modernist paradigm in sociology. When I say critical modernist paradigm uh, in sociology, I mean sociological thinking about modernity. I mean in under what circumstances it emerged and soci that is why sociology is a modern activity and critics of that approach. I mean critics to sociology as, 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 as a modern activity, I mean, I mean in what sense sociology is a modern activity. That is why I said it is very important to even, even question positivism. Positivism also needs to be questioned, because positivism also has uh, uh, strengthened the hands of scientism, I mean scientific reductionism. I am not talking about being, I am not, I am not, not uh, uh, rather I am a strong votary of uh, science in, it, in its true spirit. But, but we must question the, 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 uh, the way uh, all our examinations have led to scientism, scientism I mean reductionist method, reductionist uh, way of looking at science. Okay? You, can, you can look at the works of Einstein, you can look at the works of uh, J. B. S. Haldane. Uh, you can look at the uh, 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 you can look at the works of um, uh, Weibe, Baika, uh, 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 even uh, you can look at the works of uh, 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 Gyan Prakash, uh, Jahir Babar, and so on to uh, to see uh, if 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 we follow. Uh, 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 scientism, then what kind of problems it may lead to? Okay, you can look at the works of Kuhn, you can look at the works of Popper, you can look at the works of Feyerabend. Okay, scientism is is a problem. Okay, that I mean we cannot have a, a reductionist approach. That's why I said 
critics of this approach. What constitutes modernity? What constitutes science? What constitutes development? Okay? I mean must be critiqued. Okay? This is the central theme that I wanted to uh, foreground. Then, then what are uh, uh, then if I say uh, the, that that critical modernist paradigm in sociology or critical modernism or critical modernist paradigm in sociology, if I say what are the central philosophical and political foundations of modernity. I mean what are the central philosophical and political foundations of critical modernism or critical modernist paradigm in sociology? What are the central pillars of modernity in a conventional sense? In a, in a, in a sense when we witnessed enlightenment, when we witnessed, witnessed industrial revolution, when we witnessed French revolution. The, the, there are four central pillars of modernity, there are four central philosophical and political foundations of modernity and these include holism or totality, reflexivity, rationality and social movements. Okay. What are these, these, these four components holism or totality, reflexivity, rationality and social movements? Holism or totality refers to the idea that society is a unit in some sense and that it can be studied as a single entity. Reflexivity uh, uh, refers to the idea that we cannot simply observe society from the outside because we are also involved in it. Okay. Rationality refers to the idea that we can understand society in which uh, or in the ways in which we can explain to other people and social movements refer to the idea that creative human action both shapes the social world and in turn is shaped by it. Let us discuss one by one properly, very carefully. Holism or totality which suggests that, uh, that uh, the society is a unit in some sense, it is a single unit in some sense and that it can be studied as a single entity, there are certain problems in this in this. If, if society is, is a, if society can be studied as a single entity, do you, do we mean that no all societies are universally characterized, so that we can study all societies as a single unit? Do we mean to say that no American society is just like Indian society? The society in Delhi is just like the society in Arunachal Pradesh or Mizoram. There are there are certain problems, but why why modernists? I mean the proponents of modernity at that time. I mean in the 19th century, 20th century, they thought of in in the 19th century and in the uh, first half of the 20th century that why they said. The idea uh, uh, that society is unit in some sense and that it can be studied as a single entity. There was a sense of colonialism that uh, they thought that no, they were uh, civilized and uh, Indians are uh, not civilized, cultural superiority was maintained, economic superiority was maintained, political superiority is, was maintained. I mean, all sorts of regime were were attributed to the the way modernity was sketched. Okay. That's why European modernity or the proponents of European modernity, they always tried to to impose uh, uh, their ways of uh, 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 or their notions of development on the rest of the population. Okay. 
then then reflexivity refers to the idea i mean this is the problem with holy gym or totality but reflexivity rationality social movements they are very important i mean i mean we will will we'll see and there are also problems within that in that reflexivity i mean it refers to the idea that we cannot simply observe society from the outside because we are also involved in it if we isolate ourselves from the society okay then we cannot understand society we cannot simply observe society okay uh, when we come to rationality which is based on reason what what uh, what uh, uh, rene descartes said uh, cogito ergo sum i think therefore i am i doubt therefore i am i have question therefore i am you interrogate or perish if you do not interrogate then then th there is no question of your existence i mean earlier notion was that that i exist therefore i think but descartes said no cartesian philosophy of science suggests that no i think therefore i exist my existence is contingent upon the ways i think and that makes uh, uh, human species different from other species okay that reasoning capacity but but european nationality again it was driven by only industrial revolution enlightened european enlightenment and so on we will we'll discuss in the lectures to follow when we come to social movements okay it refers to the idea that creative human action both shapes the social whole and is shaped by it i mean by acting upon nature by changing nature human beings not only change nature but also change the social relationships implicit in it involved in it uh, i mean human beings not only change by acting upon nature human beings not only change nature but also change themselves okay that's a, then the, this this dialectic of nature must be extended to our analysis of society and polity culture okay in the case of a change of regime maybe a political regime maybe an economic regime and so on okay before before i i am um, i we move on to uh, um to the to certain methodologies to understand these four holy gym or totality reflexivity rationality and social movements okay what i want to do in this lecture then is to explain why these ideas matter and how do we get there what i want to do in this lecture then is to explain why these ideas matter why these central uh, philosophical and political foundations of critical modernist paradigm in sociology matter why these central pillars of modernity matter i mean namely holy gym or totality reflexivity rationality and social movements and how do we get there this is important then it involves a methodology okay this is this is this this is of course of course is a course in current social and political theory i mean um, who are these social and political theorists cultural theorists okay i mean who are they one obvious answer is that we are because we are all studying for degrees in some areas within humanities and social sciences uh, maybe engineering maybe sciences uh, you will find that they are also important in the shaping of certain disciplinary discourses in sciences and engineering you, you will you will understand the 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 uh, the, the temper of this course okay once we finish the lectures all lectures okay that is an that is an immediate institute that may be an immediate institutional meaning okay but since the institution 
at least partly is organized around our competence in a particular mode of think or thinking okay that mode itself becomes important to us c right mills uh, called this mode the sociological imagination and 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 c right mills okay used this term used the term the sociological imagination okay to mean uh, to imply at least uh, four things to connote four three four things one is to understand the larger historical scene in terms of its meaning and for the inner life and the external career of a variety of individuals secondly the sociological imagination helps us or it enables us to take into account how individuals in the welter of their daily experiences often become falsely conscious of their social positions and within that thirdly and within that uh, welter of their daily experiences the framework of modern society is sought and the psychologies of a variety of human beings are formulated and and fourthly uh, c right mills used the term the sociological imagination to enable us to grasp history and biography and the relation between the two within society this is this is important okay and now 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 what we are going to do now if you if you look at this now if you look at this these these four components of the sociological imag imagination by c right mills let us let us discuss one by one okay to first to understand the larger historical scene in terms of its meaning and for the inner life and the external career of a variety of individuals i must try to look at that mode of thinking which which she right mills called the sociological imagination in terms of its historical contemporaneity if i do that then i bring about meaning in a more contemporary sense okay secondly it enables us to take into account how individuals in the welter of their daily experiences often become falsely conscious of their social positions let me give you an example if my income increases if your income increases does it alter your class situation many people will say yes uh, if our income increases we will also see an enhancement in our class class position no classes are manifestations of economic differences classes are constituted not by the income that one earns but on the basis of the position that one occupies in the process of production or the functions that he performs in the process of production when i say this i mean for example there are two blacksmiths okay one the owner and the other a paid worker both belong to two different classes not one okay that's why that's why if my income increases if i if i become falsely conscious of my own social position that is wrong okay my my income may increase but my role doesn't change my spending pattern may change but my social position doesn't change i remain as a student i remain as a teacher right i do not become the owner of a company where i can rule okay my class position doesn't change even if my income increases okay that's why the sociological imagination is very important it's a, it's a very very important methodological tool to to uh, which which enables us to take into account how individuals in in the welter of their daily experiences of often become falsely conscious of their social positions and within and thirdly within that 
welter of their daily experiences, the framework of modern society is sought. And the psychologies of a variety of women and men are formulated. I mean the framework of modern society that that uh, that uh, that within the welter of uh, of my daily experiences what kind of a modern society I, I, I seek the modern society that I seek actually is 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 a part of consumerist culture which 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 has to be negated which has to be questioned Okay. And, and this consumerist culture, it, it saps the psychologies of a variety of women and men, okay. that is that's very important. Okay. That is why we become falsely conscious of, of our own social positions. Okay. And fourthly, C. Wright Mills used this term, uh, the sociological imagination okay, uh, uh, which uh, enables us to grasp history and biography and the relation between the two within society. History is different from biography. If you, if you really want to, uh, if anybody wants to read uh, or know about uh, the quintessence of uh, or the constituents of history, please read E. H. Carr's uh, uh, What is History? History is not simply about the past. That is the difference between history and the past, history and chronology. If I, if I tell you, in 1757, um, there is Battle of Plassey, in 1764, Buxar War, in 1803, Pike Mutiny, in 1857, the first Indian War of Independence, in uh, 1921, non-cooperation movement, 1931, civil disobedience movement, 1942, civil, I mean, quit India movement, uh, 1947, India got independence. This is not history, this is, this is chronology. But what meanings are generated through these events, it becomes a part of history. That is why, chronology is different from history. The way I generate meanings through these events becomes a part of history. Okay, that's why we we must be able to grasp uh, history and biography and the relation between the two within society. Uh, one of the elements of this sociological imagination. Okay, uh, I think. Uh, is a good working relationship with theory. What is this concept application? Concept application is nothing but uh, working relationship with theory. What are concepts? First of all, concepts are sort and descriptions of reality or a part of reality. When our real world phenomena change, we also tend to change our concepts. That is how we tend to arrive at newer and newer concepts. Concepts are never static. If our real world phenomena are not static, then concepts will also not be static. Concepts are also dynamic. Yeah. Concepts change with a change in our real world phenomena. Okay. When I say this, that, 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 that this concept application, I mean some kind of a good working relationship with theory, this does not mean a static position of information about what Marx or Weber said or even a programmatic statement about uh, uh, a statement that, that, that we take their theories to be true and see, in our, uh, and see our work as applying them to the examination of specific problems, which often uh, in practice means mutilating the reality so that it fits into the theory. Instead, what we should do is that a good relationship with theory means the ability to think about our immediate research problems in a way which generates ideas of more general relevance, I mean which are thus in one way or another theoretical, 
and to examine the work of other social scientists, scientists, other other uh, um, uh, scholars for such ideas, which might be of use in our own practice. When I say theory, okay, we will we'll, we'll, we'll come to this, this, this point a little while later. Firstly, firstly, when I say good working relationship with theory, I mean concept application, okay, it means that it implies that uh, theory is the common coinage uh, of sciences, social sciences, social sociology itself. Okay. It is what makes the work of someone doing participant observation into the social organization of uh, dying in hospitals relevant to the work of someone attempting to analyze the social structure of uh, East European society, uh, uh, East European landscape um, in the 1970s and vice versa. But it also implies that uh, I mean, I mean, theory is always about theory about something. Whether that 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 something, if you look at this this slide, I mean, this this uh, theory about something. I mean, whether that 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 something is as specific as the reasons for gender disparity, or as general as the nature of society in the abstract. In in every case it refers to at a greater or lesser degree of abstraction to human experience, which is after all, I mean uh, human experience when I say, I mean which is after all, all we have to uh, go on our own experience and people's experience, other people's experience, not simply our experience, but the experience of other people. Okay. At some point, at, 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 at some point, okay, mm. it is very, it is very important, I mean at some point theory has to be uh, about something, theory uh, um, can fairly be judged, evaluated, not so much in terms of whether it is right or wrong. Uh, as of whether it helps us make sense of what we are uh, looking at or whether it systematically prevents us from getting to grips with it. As well, as well as this empirical pull, though there is always a pull towards temporarily abstracted thought, like as, as I said nature of society. Okay, it is abstract, it is not very specific, it is not uh, uh, it is very general, it is very abstract nature of societies. Okay. And, and, and such, such analysis derives initially from the requirement of coherence, a requirement which is in principle not restricted to academic theory. We all recognize inconsistency in everyday statements uh, such as the witnesses statement, I was not there and if I was, I was asleep. I mean more generally uh, this ability to detect inconsistency, I mean the presence of uh, contradictory statements and to push statements um, to what we often describe as their logical conclusions can be generalized from this everyday level to any level of abstraction. One can, one can read uh, against method by Paul Farabend uh, um, outline of an uh, anarchistic uh, uh, outline of an anarchistic theory of knowledge to make sense of this. Okay. For example, Plato, okay. Plato demonstrates uh, um, this, this such analysis graphically in a dialogue where Socrates helps an illiterate slave to discover Pythagoras theorem, okay. simply by dint of asking him questions. I mean this, this is this is why interrogation is very important. You, if you cannot question, you you will perish. Uh, uh, whatever be the nature of the state, you must not refrain from asking questions. Okay. Thus, 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 in in one way or another, thinking about our immediate research problems, okay, 
thinking about our immediate research problems brings us uh, brings us into the murky waters of theory. You may find uh, the, at times theory is consistent, the particular theory is consistent, at times you may find that a particular theory is inconsistent. Okay. This comes about by a generalization of particular everyday ways of thinking and we shall see later in the course that these have been increasingly brought into question when we discuss nature of sociological theory. Okay. My, my central argument then, then what we have discussed in this, this, in this lecture is that we, we started with uh, uh, the thematic preliminaries. I mean, uh, uh, I mean thematic preliminaries when I said uh, the, the, the way we try to capture modernity it is not in a linear manner, it is not in a hierarchical manner, it is not in a singular, uh, it is not a singular view. Okay. Uh, I mean if we can see, if we can uh, look at uh, European modernity, we can look at uh, Latin American modernity, African modernity, Asian modernity, even within Asian modernity, we can look at Indian modernity, uh, Singaporean modernity, Taiwanese modernity and so on. Uh, even within Indian modernity, we can do, we can find alternative or multiple modernities. That is why we must question such hierarchical view of modernity. That is why we must question them, we must interrogate them uh, and this the, the, uh, that is why the term interrogation or interrogating modernity does not mean merely destruction of either to existing ideas. Interrogating modernity or interrogation also refers to the dialectic of engaging with and interrogating hitherto existing ideas and the ethos precisely because the ethos of uh, interrogating uh, modernity or interrogation loses its significance in the absence of a critical engagement with hitherto existing ideas. That is why we discussed engagement assumes greater significance in the context of not just interrogation, but also interrogating the interrogator. Okay. That is why I gave you the example of capitalism, Marx and so on. Why? Precisely because both engaging with modernity as well as interrogating modernity are very much context specific. Keeping this in mind, we started discussing uh, uh, the this specific course on sociological perspectives on modernity or critical, I mean uh, critical modernist paradigm in sociology or critical modernism. Okay. For the sake of simplicity, this, this, this course as I have said that uh, this course is all about the critical modernist paradigm in sociology, I mean uh, sociological thinking about modernity and sociology as a modern activity keeping the 18th century, 19th century uh, uh, global context in mind and also then why sociology is a modern activity? You know, precisely because uh, of, of those global uh, 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 changes in the modes of production, in the, in the, uh, in the modes of thinking, uh, uh, in the modes of intellectual and political consciousness. Okay. And we must bring about a critique to that approach also. Okay. Then we moved on to uh, discussing uh, uh, four central philosophical and political foundations of modernity, namely holism or totality, reflexivity, rationality and social movements. And we have discussed how holism or totality refers to the idea that society is a unit in some sense at, at a very generic level and that it can be studied as a single entity. Reflexivity refers to the idea that we cannot simply observe society from the outside because we are also involved in it. Rationality refers to the idea that we can understand society in ways in which we can explain to other people. I mean it is the rationality is based on reasoning capacity and social movements. You may, in, you may say political movements also. Okay. It refers to the idea that creative human action both shapes the social whole and in turn is shaped by it. Okay. That is why by acting upon nature, human beings not only change nature, but also change themselves. 
as a as a as a as a prefatory uh, remark on on methodologies or tools and techniques to understand modernity to uh, tools and techniques to interrogate modernity we we tried to bank on c right mills the sociological imagination there are at least four important characteristics of the of the sociological imagination or the way c right mills used the term the sociological imagination first to understand the larger historical scene in terms of its meaning and for the inner life and the external career of a variety of individuals to enable us to take into account how individuals in the welter of their daily experiences often become falsely conscious of their social positions and within that welter within that welter of their daily experiences you will find how the psychologies of a variety of women and men are formulated and last but not the least the term the sociological imagination enables us to grasp history and biography and the relation between the two within society okay i mean from 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 these four for, from the delineation of uh, the sociological imagination the the way we have got that that one of the elements of this sociological imagination i think is a is a good working relationship with theory that's why i said concept application i mean when i say a good working relationship with theory i mean theory about something whether that something is as specific uh, as the reasons for gender disparity or as general as the nature of society in the abstract whether it is uh, specific or, or general whether it is concrete or abstract in every case it refers to uh, refers at a greater or lesser degree of abstraction to human experience when i say uh, uh, human experience which is after all all we have to go on our uh, own experience as well as uh, other people's experience okay um, uh, having said this okay uh, in the in the next lecture what we are going to do we are going to uh, discuss the nature of sociological theory before we uh, uh, start with classic statements about sociological modernity thank you